which led me to my conclusion. <laughs> me. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When I was trying to get pregnant, I would have tried or done almost anything to succeed. And there's no shortage of unconventional ideas and methods. Some may call them spiritual, Eastern, woo-woo, or flat out batshit crazy. By the time I'd hit my 10th round of IVF, I had quite a robust list of all the things that other people had done to get pregnant. My sister gave me a fertility stone. I had been given chains of multiple saints. A friend gave me her guardian angel, which had been passed down from her grandmother to her mother to her. Another friend insisted that I say the St. Jude prayer nine times for nine days and drop off nine copies of the prayer to nine different churches. I never did that. My acupuncturist suggested a vaginal facial? What? I had acupuncture, I did yoga, I visited a Reiki master, I drank herbal teas, and I prayed every night for a mentally and physically healthy baby with normal genetic and organ formation. I was tired of it all and had no desire to do any of it anymore. But then I had this nagging feeling of what if it worked? So I kept on trying anything. A couple weeks before I left for my egg retrieval in Lone Tree, Colorado at CCRM, my friend had an angel party. She invited a spiritual healer, Isabel, to her house and everyone got a 15 minute reading. I of course asked Isabel if I was going to have another baby. She immediately said yes, and then explained why it wasn't working. She said, you're taking too much of a project-based scientific approach to IVF. Interesting, because she didn't know I'd been a biology teacher for seven years. But I said, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, you need to think more outside the box. Participate in things that scientifically don't make sense to get pregnant. I immediately thought about how I didn't do that St. Jude prayer. Damn it. But she continued, do yoga, acupuncture, and have sex to have a baby. And I said, okay, well, I do all those things already and more, but I don't have sex to have a baby. I just have sex. It's medically impossible for us to have a baby. And she said, exactly. You're too scientific about it. You need to think outside the box. I left confused because I couldn't think of anything else I could possibly be doing. As soon as I got into the room with the other women, my friend Emily, actually the one who gave me the guardian angel, asked me what the psychic had said. And I said, well, of course I asked her if I was gonna have another baby. And that's all I'd said before I was interrupted by a woman I had just met. Her name was also Emily. Emily, the stranger said, I know what you have to do to have another baby. Ah, I thought, here we go again. Another prayer I'm going to have to do. Oh, oh, my favorite. Just stop trying so hard and you'll get pregnant right away like my friend did. She gave up trying, wrote some adoption papers, and then all of a sudden she had her own baby. How many times do I have to hear that story? So I put on my polite face. You know the one where you're thinking, I don't have the balls to tell you to please shut up. And I'm too polite to grab that bottle of wine in front of you and just walk away. So make this fast. She starts, you need watermelon, molasses, and a yellow cloth. Wait, what? Cut the watermelon up into seven pieces. Rub molasses over your stomach and use one piece of the watermelon to scrape it off. Put that piece of watermelon covered in molasses in a yellow cloth. Do this for seven days. At the end of the seven days, wrap up the pieces of watermelon, tie it up, throw it into the ocean, and then you'll be pregnant. Silence from everyone. As she described each step in the process, my thought would switch between, oh, she's batshit crazy, to, oh my God, I was just told by a psychic that I need to think outside of the box, which led me to my conclusion, fuck me. It gets better. My friend Emily asks, oh, so where did you hear about this? Have you tried this or? And Emily the stranger said, no, she told me. She, we learned, was a spirit that followed Emily the stranger around and talked to her. My friend Emily asked, 
Okay, well, Tasha, what did the psychic say you should do? And I admitted to not be so scientific and think outside the box. My friend Emily gave me a, you've got to be kidding me look. And Emily the stranger gave me a, I told you so, look. So I did what any other good woman would do and tried to negotiate the terms. So I said, okay, you mentioned the ocean, but there's a creek right behind my house. Emily the stranger said, nope, has to be the ocean. Okay, what about the Hudson River? That's on my way to work. Nope, only the ocean. Can I do it after the egg retrieval? Because I can't get to the ocean before my trip. Nope, has to be before. Now I'm officially pissed and annoyed. The next day, I mentioned this to a handful of friends, and most of them had the same reaction. You're not actually going to do that, are you? And I'd respond with, how can I not? I have a session with a psychic who tells me to think outside the box, and this is the first thing that someone says to me? But my friend Kim immediately said, road trip, I'm in. So I got the supplies. It was actually fun to go into a fabric store because I hadn't been in one since like sewing class in middle school. Night one, I show my husband what I had to do. He smiled and said, good luck. And I'm sorry. Hindsight? I should have said to him, get your ass in that shower with me and do it too. Show some unity and equality for once in this IVF ordeal. But I didn't think about that then. But that would have been, I should have said that. Anyway, I got into the shower and made a huge mess. I mean, molasses was everywhere. The floor, the walls, the temperature handles, the shower door handle. Then I had to walk out of the shower half covered in molasses and put that piece of watermelon in the cloth. I did have a great idea though. I put the yellow cloth in a Tupperware so that I could easily, cleanly store my molasses covered watermelon. But I hid that Tupperware under my sink under a towel because there was no way I was explaining this to the babysitter who would otherwise see it in the fridge. No way. About night three though, I did get a system going. And then I noticed something weird. When I sat on the bench in my shower and rubbed molasses all over, my stomach looked round and protruding, and I actually looked really pregnant. Now, something about me is that I have a naturally flat stomach. Sloppy ass, a flat stomach. So it was especially weird. The next thing I started to notice was that when the molasses dripped on the wet floor, it looked like iodine, which always reminds me of my first C-section. Trust me, I wasn't looking for symbolism. I was just trying to get through this messy process. But these two things were too clear not to notice. Still, those signs didn't stop me from trying to get out of the time consuming part, which was going to the ocean. I called up my friend Colleen who hosted the party. And I said, listen, I can't go to the ocean this weekend. I'm swamped, it's supposed to rain. Call up your friend and see if I can dump this thing anywhere else. She called back and said, Emily says it has to be the ocean because she creates life, she being the ocean. The molasses covered watermelon is an offering to her, like a gift, and in return, she will help you create life. The river, on the other hand, does something else. She brings people together. So if you dump it there, you will have a reunion or a marriage proposal, but not a baby. Ugh, I thought. I called up Kim and urged her to agree with me that we should just cancel. And Kim said, no way, we're going. I said, but it's supposed to rain and I'm behind. And she said, who cares? We have to do this. Okay, fine. It was on. At the beach, I was really nervous because, oh, well, um, dumping stuff into the ocean is illegal. And this isn't a little something. This is a big yellow something. It turned out that the beach we had chosen had sections of large black rocks going right into the ocean. Perfect. So I slowly walked to the end of the rocks and dumped the gift, said my usual prayer for a mentally and physically healthy baby with normal genetics and organ formation, and started to walk back. Kim yelled for a picture. I posed all happy and proud, mostly that this annoying process was over and that I actually did it. And I forgot where I was for a second too long. A wave came up and slapped me right on the butt. Nothing else got wet. 
I got a good job ass slap from her. Her being the ocean. And now you could clearly see my bare butt from my white shorts and thong. We had to go shopping so I didn't sit in wet underwear and so no one would have to look at my bare ass. I bought a dress, this dress, and without realizing it right away, it was watermelon color. I got pregnant that round. Now there were many other variables during that round too, but I can't discount the watermelon technique. For more personal stories, go to TashaBlasi.com and sign up to be an FU Insider. My FU Insiders get the most access to my fertility advice and adventures.